Hey guys and welcome back to my channel or if you need here, hi, welcome. My name is Emma, I'm 17 years old and I'm currently documenting my journey from recovery from anorexia and I'm currently following the all-in method. If you don't know what the all-in method, it's similar to intuitive eating and it's basically where you eat whatever you want, whenever you want and there are also a little bit of things that are a bit different so that you must eat a minimum of free meals, of free snacks a day. You're not allowed to act in or engage in any eating disorder behavior or OCD behaviors or anything that will keep you like within the depths of your eating disorder you're not allowed to act on any of them whatsoever no matter how hard like them urges are you must honor both your physical and mental hunger and that's been the method that I've been going for for about three months now so I went ahead and I took to Instagram to go ahead and ask you guys what video you wanted to see and you guys voted for this video and I also asked what questions would you like to be answered and you've asked me some questions I'm gonna go ahead and answer them right now in this video. So the first question is by Healing Ren and she asked did you struggle with extreme edema and such water retention in recovery? So water edema is like I mentioned water retention and it's basically where your body stores fluid in certain areas and this is kind of a response to starvation mode and your body is just starts to like hold on to everything like I mentioned how it holds on to food it also holds on to a lot of water as well and I did I suffered with this really really badly so often you get like a puffy face or you can get like water edema in your stomach your arms your legs so my worst areas was my legs and I actually had it in my face for some time it settled down so much now but like I literally look like a bit like a puffer fish like I was like like for like ages um but that definitely settled down in my face uh, my thighs i when i first recovered without the all in method um my thighs was like the main area where it was targeted like i was my thighs just looked really puffy my legs just looked puffy like it was really weird because your body basically looks really disproportioned because like you could have really puffy legs and then like a really small body or like the other way around like you could have a really puffy like kind of belly and then really tiny legs and like this is just like the whole water retention though and it does not last it will go away all you have to do is just continue the process of the refeeding and continue the process of just giving your body what it needs and it won't need to hold on and store all of this water or food if i pronounce any names wrong as well i apologize but gretty john sue said is my metabolism going to adapt to the higher amount of calories and is it okay to want food more than every half an hour even and yes so i'll answer the metabolism one first and then go to the food one so your metabolism will adapt to the higher amount of calories that you eat it's the way it works so when you first start to eat a high amount of calories your body will gain fast and that's a common fact like your body needs to adjust to the amount first and then it will start to adjust and then it'll be able to maintain that calorie amount and then sometimes even if you're underweight sometimes you're you get like a hyper metabolism where you have to eat even more than the amount so i know that some people have to like man can maintain like 3000 calories and i did actually was like that for some time and you have to then increase your amount to make sure that you're able to continue to gain that amount of weight and uh, if you're at a healthy weight still then you'll be able to maintain at that as well and I also will also think that it also depends on the amount that you heavily restricted. So if you restricted like really, if you restricted a lot, then the first like the first amount of like gain that you gain will probably be a lot more. But that is just because it will literally just be food weight and water weight. It's not actual weight. So don't freak out about that. When you see that number go up or whatnot, that's not an actual weight gain. That is literally your body, like I mentioned, holding on to water and store and things. And also you get like lots of things like constipation and everything like that. So that still weighs, you know what I mean? Like poop does weigh. <laughs> Okay, so then the other thing was, is it okay to want food more than every half an hour even? Yes, literally, uh, when I first started my all-in journey, I was literally hungry every 20 minutes. Like, I couldn't go 20 minutes without snacking on at least something. Like, even if it was just, like, a handful of something, I had to stick something in my mouth, basically. And that's just, that's completely normal. Um, your body is obviously being in the starvation kind of, like, deficit, and it needs this amount of food. And that's alright to give it. Just remember that you're allowed to do that. 
Maggie asked, what is the main difference between all in and other forms of recovery? So other forms of recovery still kind of has some restriction around it and still has some kind of control aspect of it, where it's all in, it's completely letting go of everything. So for example, mini mode still requires you to count calories. It still requires an ED behavior. And that still like keeps you in the depths of your eating disorder whereas all in you can't count calories you literally you can't allow yourself to count calories because it's classed as an eating behavior same with um things like meal plans or when you go to like a dietitian and they give you a meal plan and you're following that that's still kind of a control aspect because you're being controlled by a meal plan basically like you have to stick within it within these stupid guidelines and like the foods and things even if it's like even if it's quite an open meal plan you're still following a meal plan and like that's still not like free from your ed Alyssa put how to keep motivation up and healing span but how do you cope with the guilt and anxiety so how to keep motivation up so for me personally I didn't really struggle with this as much because I knew how motivated I was like I really got to the point where I was really fed up with my eating disorder and really fed up with everything and all the rules and restrictions and like it just it, I, I got to that point last year like well yeah last year I keep forgetting that it's 2020 last year that I was so so low like I mean to the point of I got so depressed I got really suicidal and I nearly actually took my life and like when you've been to that low like when people say that like the only way is up when you've hit rock bottom it kind of is that and I got so motivated after seeing myself so low and then when I started to eat and realize my mood just picked up and I became a completely different person I mean like even if you watch even if you watched like my recent videos and then if you watch the videos where I was coming up my relapse and I was really fresh I'm just like away with it like I'm just like completely not focused completely i just i'm not myself basically like compared to now like i feel like i have so much more energy so much more focus and just my mindset is completely different and my motivations are completely different um i feel like in the beginning i was more i was more motivated to recover for everyone else around me and now i've realized that i'm more recovery i want to recover more for myself more than anything and then and then comes like the other thing like i want to recover for my family i want to recover for the bbb code which is um boobs baby's bum code which megzi like made and that is all i'm always like with that but my main motivation is for me and you need to have that too you need to realize that like if you want to live your life and if you want to live an ed free life and you want to be happy then you know you have to keep going you have to keep going remind yourself like every single night of why you're doing what you're doing remind yourself every single morning what you're doing and when i first started all in i watched tapestry's video non-stop like i owe tabitha my life like i literally i cannot thank her enough how much she has helped me um because without her i wouldn't have been completely like able to just let go of all of my ad behaviors but just watching her and just watching her be so blunt and honest and give the reality rather than sugarcoating it it was just so much better like i feel like a lot of people when it comes to like eds and stuff they often kind of make things seem like you know do a full perspective of the reality to try and hide us from the reality of what actually needs to happen but like the reality of having an eating disorder is bleak it's death and that's like there's no way around it basically it's basically miserable and then you die like there is no way of like trying to sugarcoat that or make that seem any better than it is and if you're not recovering and if you're not kind of fully committed to recovering then you know like you're gonna be miserable and then it's just gonna slip and slip and slip until you die and like it's awful but it's the reality and people need to know that rather than just thinking that they can stay in this kind of quasi stage for life how do you cope with the guilt and anxiety this links back to the motivation kind of thing making sure that you remind yourself of why you're doing what you're doing and making sure that you are like distracted i guess like doing things like 
but you would do pre-ED um, if you feel like you need to still be like involved with food and stuff do things like baking or whatnot like that if you like enjoy that kind of thing then do that kind of thing um, but just remember like that like this isn't gonna last this is temporarily like everything that kind of ha happens in recovery is just temporarily like your body is your recovery body it's not the body you're gonna have for your life and it's not going to be like like all these bloating and stuff that you're having that's all temporary and it will go away attempting recovery 16 asked do you think it fixes slow metabolism and yes i am proof of that once again um so basically if i don't know if you guys knew this but two years ago when i almost recovered physically i was mentally really really poorly unfortunately but i was literally posting on this channel and i did recover quite fast physically this time but that was mainly because my metabolism was so so slow i couldn't i literally couldn't eat two meals without gaining weight and my meal portions were absolutely terrible like they were so so bad but i couldn't eat a lot of food without gaining weight and the fear of gaining weight was so immensely there that i didn't do all about it i just i basically restored weight while restriction and that caused me to have a relapse and like i so wish i just allowed myself to just go all in back then but to be honest that wasn't really a thing back then um like it wasn't a thing at all really like it was kind of like it was kind of like just quasi everywhere to be honest like i never really saw anyone in real recovery and i never like really saw people you know just completely honoring everything and then like um it just didn't really appe like appeal to me to do that and like it would just it was just so scary for me basically and i just backed down every time everyone when i thought of like just letting myself eat whatever i wanted to eat every single day it was just like whoa no that can't be a thing um but like when i actually did go you know all in and this was after my relapse and stuff like that and obviously my metabolism was once again fucked um and my metabolism just started to speed up like i did gain weight like i mentioned that first i did gain weight quite rapidly and then all of a sudden it just like it kind of just slowed down and then i got to a point where i maintained at such a high amount and i was like whoa like this is madness but it happens i'm proof like tabitha's proof hey girl masala if you watch her on youtube there were so many people stephanie buttermore she because she said like she maintained at like three thousand calories and stuff like that like there is so much proof out there that it works and it definitely does work um the way to like speed up your metabolism is to eat consistently um to never skip breakfast i don't care what anyone says skipping breakfast is the worst thing because it wakes up your metabolism that's a fact does it get easier over time mentally or does it stay hard as fuck Reco recovering kiwi asked um it gets so much easier honestly like i literally like i cannot put this you know how much easier it gets so i'm not gonna sit here and be like you know i'm like frying every single day like i never have breakdowns because like that's not the case like i still have breakdowns over food i still get stressed i still got the anxiety around food the thing is is how you deal with it and how you cope with it and how you don't let it affect your eating so like it does get easier though over time and you get less and less anxious the more you do something the more it seems like less and less less so example when i stopped my exercise and things it was so hard i cried so so much and then i realized that actually like when the days went by it was kind of more like a weight off my shoulder not having to do that i could relax i could finally just sit down i could finally just sit and eat without feeling the need of being like if i eat this i need to do xyz amount of like this to burn this and stuff like that like just knowing that i didn't have to do that it was just so freeing and it was just it was so much better um and then when it comes to actually eating itself like it, it gets easier like if someone said to me if someone showed myself like on my really old videos like this is what you will be doing like in like a few months time like you'll be eating entire buffets to yourself and you'll be okay about it i would be like stop bullshitting me like right now like can you not but like literally it happens like I find buffets and stuff now really easy and I'm really able, like really easy to cope with it and stuff and like 
I never thought that would happen. Like, I remember saying actually, like, when I did a live stream a long time ago, when I came up with my relapse, I was like, I, I couldn't imagine doing an indulgence day. I couldn't imagine eating cakes and stuff like that because I was so fresh out with that relapse that I was just completely, I just wasn't ready for anything. And then now I can actually sit and eat like six cupcakes every single day and be like okay with it obviously i still have my days where i, I struggle but i don't let it affect my eating I, yes i'm struggling mentally but the difference is i don't let it affect my eating i don't think i've ever restricted like a meal on purpose and well since i started this whole journey i haven't restricted on purpose at all like which is crazy and my breakdown got less and less so like it during the beginning i cried like pretty much every day like that's like a truth like i'm not gonna say like i didn't because i did i cried like a baby like all the time i got angry i i got frustrated with myself if i didn't do what i really wanted to do or um like i just i would just get angry a lot to be honest but i would take my anger out more on other people like which isn't great so it caused a lot of conflict and stuff like that but, but I was so frustrated and I was so angry but like that I realized when I actually just started to let myself do what I wanted to do and just let myself eat what I wanted to eat then it just got less and less and then when I realized that every time I would restrict I would get like really hangry then I realized that I can't restrict because every time I restrict I get angry and I get like shouty and whingy and just it's it's just not a nice mood like i get really um like if someone like touched me wrong like if someone like like i don't know like knocked into me then i'd be like like what are you doing or like if someone went, as, like, went in the kitchen I was, if someone was even eating i was so hyper aware of the food like they could be sitting eating and chewing and i'd be able to hear the chewing really really louder and i realized that when i'm hungry i hear it obviously louder because you come so hyper aware of food and i could hear them like chewing i'm just like stop chewing right now <laughs> you know <laughs> Oh, Talia put, do you or still you struggle with deciding to eat something when your mental hunger kicks in? So I still get some days where my cravings are a lot more intense and it's really harder to, you know, separate what I'm actually craving or what I'm just like thinking about. Like, um, but if I'm thinking about it, then I realize that I'm probably craving it. So then I should go and get it. Um, it's more like when you feel like you have so many cravings at once and you just don't know how to cope with them because there's some days where you want pancakes waffles crumpets and then you have to just be like well i'm gonna have pancakes waffles crumpets like or like you're like i don't know what toppings to have on like my toast and then you just be like well put loads of slices and i'll have lots of toppings like you know what i mean like you're able to do that so do it <laughs> do you ever feel like your parents were confused about you eating so much um so much like so much as in people with anorexia, anorexia don't eat so it might seem lots to others um no because obviously remember you're yes you may have anorexia but you're recovering from anorexia and that's the difference and a person recovering from anorexia needs lots of food and my parents already knew like what i wanted to do and what i wanted to set out and they kind of wanted me for that so they weren't really confused by it seeing it more than anything it really pleased them to see me eating so much food if you actually crave something even though you just ate do you eat it then you still need to eat it like if even if you've just ate even if it's one minute after a meal you still need to eat it so usually like to be honest when i have my 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 dinner i literally i can't last like I think the limit I can last is like 10 minutes before I go ahead and get something sweet. Um, as soon as I have something savory, I feel like I always need something sweet straight afterwards to satisfy that mental kind of sweet craving. And I go ahead and do that. And that's completely normal. Like even if it's five minutes after one minute after a meal, you still still try and get it. The way that I always recommend, so basically say you've just ate a big meal, I will always recommend you to have desserts as well. So it doesn't feel like you're just quickly eating could be like oh this is a lunch dessert or this is a dinner dessert you know what i mean um i feel like that's a lot easier so if you have that kind of in place then i don't feel like you'll need that automatic i don't feel you feel as guilty about it, eating straight away because normal people have desserts and then you can have a dessert too hardest thing about all in go and cold turkey on everything including exercise especially the exercise it's the hardest thing in the world and just just having to have faith in the process and the fear of the unknown. 
um it's just so scary like i know how scary it is and i know that loads of people are like they really want to do it but like the fear is just holding them back but honestly like you just need to do it like i cannot stress it enough you just need to just feel the fear and do it anyways and like it feels physically impossible but it really isn't like there is no one physically stopping you um from doing it except from you yes there might be a mental barrier there but you can physically get up and ignore that mental barrier and that is possible um same with some people are like um but my ed tells me to restrict and then i restrict you know what i mean it's kind of like the way i i said it if someone told you to go ahead and eat dog shit will you go ahead and eat dog shit you'd be like no i'm not gonna go and eat dog shit and even if they screamed and shouted at you you wouldn't be like i'm not gonna go and eat that dog shit so no you basically need to do that because imagine your ed is telling you to restrict it's like a person telling you to eat dog shit like you just wouldn't do it and you would even if they were screaming and shouting at you to do it you just wouldn't do it you know what i mean like just so just don't do it like just a voice basically more so did you notice the difference in your mood definitely what would be the right way to start all in i would say fully cold turkey on everything um write down a fear food list if possible um stay calm and committed and keep your motivations up try and keep your spirits up try and think positively if possible and yeah are you such where you often bloated so i'm still kind of bloated pretty much all the time like yesterday i had a really bad time where i was really really bloated um i think though i've always been kind of bloated because i have celiac disease so i've always kind of struggled with bloating of celiac disease as well so um it's really hard to tell whether or not the bloatings of celiac disease are whether it's off my recovery kind of thing um laura's and the recovery put weren't you scared you would never stop gaining i think we all have that general fear of that we're never going to stop gaining weight and i think we also need to realize that that's unrealistic because like you're not going to gain weight forever your body isn't like your body doesn't want to gain weight forever your body just wants you to be healthy and your body wants to optimize its performance basically therefore it wants to get at a healthy weight and it wants to stay up nice your body doesn't want to be like obese or anything like that your body that wouldn't optimize its performance your body wants to keep you healthy therefore that's why i believe in set points so much leah can put can i rest all day like really no exercise really you can rest all day i don't do any exercise all day now i literally sit down pretty much all day go out the odd time to like the shops the cinema you know what i mean just do stuff like that but you can literally sit down all day normal people so normal people just don't do any exercise you sit down all day and you can rest what do recover and admire but what to do when you're not physically when you're not mentally or physically hungry at all at snack time if i'm a healthy weight um snack time is still snack time and i know it's hard but it sounds like you're following a meal plan maybe so you maybe want to try and work around and i know you say snack time but we shouldn't really have a specific snack time we should just really snack when we want to snack as long as you have a minimum of free meals free snacks a day then you know you should really just be eating when you actually want to eat something as long as you eat the minimum amount it doesn't matter what time you eat it just as long as you eat it Recovery for animals, lovely name. Asked, did you have professional support when you went all in? And do you think everyone can recover with this method? Or do you think some people need a meal plan? Um, so I've had professional support in the past. So I worked with two teams. So I worked with CAMS and then I worked with EDICT, which is Eating Disorder Int Intensive Community Treatment Team. And they didn't help at all they didn't i didn't uh, this all in kind of thing wasn't back when they were like a thing stuff like that this was years ago kind of like two years ago now three um when i was with camps and edict and stuff and they didn't help me whatsoever i actually had to discharge myself well with the help of my parents i had to discharge myself against medical advice because of the fact that they didn't help me and i didn't start recovering properly until i actually left the services um but i know that a lot of professionals aren't fully supportive of everyone eating you know the same amount of 
like letting yourself eat the amount that you want to eat because of the fact that when I mentioned in my previous video if you watched that that for some reason professionals like to keep you in a recovering state rather than a recovery recovered state and they think that you're not able to handle the amount that you want to eat and that you will relapse or strict or whatever once you eat the amount that you want to eat and therefore keeping you in a recovering state rather than a recovered state which I disagree with. Um, do you think everyone can recover with this method? Yes, regardless of your weight, everyone deserves to be able to eat whatever they want to eat no matter what that is, no matter what your weight is, no matter who you are, everyone deserves to be able to have a free life of food. We shouldn't have to put restrictions on ourselves. And do you think some people need a meal plan? Um, when you first begin recovery, I guess a meal plan is good to be able to build yourself up and to be able to, you know, be aware of the amount of food that you need to eat and be aware of like, you know, free meals, free snacks a day. But once again, I wouldn't say a meal plan is that helpful at all. Obviously, I know that those people are like, well, I don't know what to portion myself. I don't know what to do with this. Ask people around you if this portion looks all right. Um, you know, like they will know if they're healthy and stuff. They will tell you if it's a good portion. Always over portion for yourself, even if there's no one around to help you. Always over portion, like your first pouring out thing is probably not going to be what you want it will probably be what your anorexia actually wants so say if you pour in that cereal and you stop then pour a little bit more just to make sure um, because your first initial reaction will probably be like anorexia so make sure that you do that the lie x strawberry put do you eat less through the day just to be able to binge in the evening no, so basically this was something that a lot of people struggle with. I struggled with it even a long time ago before I started all in. Um, because all in, like I mentioned, I feel like people keep getting confused with all in and what it actually means. It means that you listen to your hunger every single day, every single time, and you must honor it. Like there's literally no way around it. So I've been getting so stressed lately because I've been seeing loads of people using the term all in and not actually doing all in. And like, it's kind of annoying because then it kind of, you know, ruins the point of what all in is and people get confused. People don't know what all in actually is. It's like when people use recovery and then not actually actually in recovery and then more like in a quasi kind of stage. It's kind of that again, but people are using the term them all in saying that they're all in and they're actually not all in whatsoever and they're actually really struggling and stuff and it's kind of really stressful because the fact that like people like um people who are actually all in like me and stuff have to kind of like explain a lot about all in because of the fact and i have to answer a lot of questions on dms and things so people just don't understand it because they're like well this person says you're all in but they still kind of restrict you know what i mean like you can't restrict and doing things like saving up calories till nighttime is restricting even if you're going to eat some calories and even if you eat a lot of food it's still restricting your intake during the day and the only way to stop this is to eat actually more during the day so then you don't have that huge binge at night because if you restrict during the day it's just going to lead to a binge and that's a fact similar to what i just answered jessica put should you call our friends such influences who aren't all in and think they're in real recovery yes definitely you need to pull people up on this kind of thing some people aren't aware that they're stepping up and some people aren't aware of the actions that they're doing some people are but some people nine times out of ten they aren't they're really disordered by their view of recovery or re their view of like their bodies and stuff like that and they don't realize that they are actually like struggling so it's always good to pull people on what it or or if you feel like it's not right for someone to be sharing like a body picture or a trigger warning then you know what yeah, go ahead pull it like you know we're all trying to help each other at the end of the day and we're not trying to hurt anyone's feelings we're just trying to get what's best for everyone so the last question I'm going to answer are who were your friends in All In? So a while ago I set up a group called All In Buddies. Unfortunately there was a limit. I didn't know that there was like a limit to how many people can be in a group chat. But there was a really small limit of how many people could be in a group chat and loads of people wanted to join that group chat. So unfortunately I wasn't able to add everyone who was All In into the group chat. But I made lots of lovely friends. So shout out to you Ruby who asked me this question. Um, shout out to Mel. Shout out to Recovery Goff, shout out to Nutty Recovery who was energized Belle once, but then she changed her thing. Shout out to Lola, um, shout out to Blossom and Katie. I've got so many friends, I'm actually gonna go through the group and have a look. Be Recovery, Educate Georgia, like I mentioned Mel, Recovery for Happiness, 
um, Recovery in Georgia, Blossom Katie, Izzy, Recovery Dretchy. Like there is just so many people that I've met through this and I'm so, so thankful. Like I've made so many friends from going all in. Like I couldn't be happier. Um, so I'm gonna end this video here. I hope some of these questions helped you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and goodbye.